Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church weekly online Bible study where we unlock the mysteries of God's holy word. This is where we encounter and experience the truth of God's word through the study of his word. We pray that something will be said that will encourage you in your journey with Christ. May God bless your reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. God bless you. And now, here's our lesson. Greetings to the Ben Washington family and to those who are watching online. This is Pastor Sneed, pastor of Ben Washington Baptist Church. I want to welcome you to uh, a, a study in eschatology. Uh, and so we want to open up with a word of prayer and we're going to do a partial review of some things that we've covered in the past, but we also want to add something new. Father God, we are asking now that you would be with us in this, this time of study of your word. We just know, Father God, that apart from you, we cannot uh, do anything. So we ask, Father God, that your spirit will guide us, direct us into this study so that what we uh, attempt to teach, Father, will not come out of human wisdom, Lord, but will be uh, divinely inspired by you and led by your Holy Spirit. Bless us to have eyes that can see and ears that can hear. And may you enlighten us, Father God, that we can have an understanding of what will take place in days to come. This we pray now in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, if you take your Bible and turn with us to Daniel chapter 9, uh, the book of Daniel chapter 9, I want to go back over verses 24 uh, through 27. Uh, some people have identified Daniel chapter 9 as perhaps one of the most important chapters uh, as it pertains to prophecy because in Daniel chapter 9, we have uh, uh, the finding uh, of the 70 weeks, okay, or 490 years. So the weeks are weeks of years. So 70 times 7 is 490. Uh, and so we know that, uh, that this is, by all accounts, uh, not speaking about seven days uh, per week, but seven years within the unit of a week. So because it is 70, uh, uh, we're told that God has 490 years of things that are to be identified with or, or to fulfill God's purpose as it relates to the nation of Israel, or we would say Abraham descendants, or we would say uh, Jewish people. Uh, Abraham was the father of the Jews, the covenant uh, that was established with Abraham uh, for the male child. They were circumcised as a token of the covenant and so uh, when Abraham had the son Isaac, and Isaac had a son Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons, and, and from those 12 sons came the 12 tribes of Israel. So uh, all the physical descendants of Abraham are, are called uh, the nation of Israel, a Jewish nation, a Jewish people. So we're not talking about spiritual Israel. We're talking about uh, a group of people who are the physical descendants of Abraham. So in, in chapter 9 of the book of Daniel, we're told that 70 weeks are determined for your people. Well, who are the people of Daniel? Uh, the Jewish people. 70 weeks are determined for your people, for your holy city. Well, what is the holy city? Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the holy city. Uh, it's considered the holy city for, for Jews. It's considered the holy city for uh, Christians. It's considered the, the holy city for those who are Muslims. Uh, but uh, here we're told that 490 years are determined for, for the people of Israel, for the holy city. And we're told the purpose of of that is to be accomplished in these 490 years. One is to finish the transgression. As I said last time, uh, because it is, the, the, the key word is the, the trans, 
question. What was what was the primary uh, transgression of of Israel as a nation, as a people? They would turn away from God. So, but in in this particular vein, their transgression uh, is their rejection of Jesus as the Messiah. But we're told that to to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, that's the second purpose. To make reconciliation for iniquity, that's the third purpose. To bring in everlasting righteousness, that's the fourth purpose. To seal up vision and prophecy, that's the fifth purpose. And to anoint the most holy, that's the sixth purpose. So there are six divine purposes of God related to the uh, the nation of Israel or to the people of Daniel, which which are the Jewish people, which... which uh, is the nation of Israel. So number one, those are the uh, six purposes, and we got the number of years, 490. But take a look at verse 25. Know therefore and understand that the going forth of the command to restore and uh, build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So notice that the 70 weeks are broken into at least three sections, seven weeks, 62 weeks, which leaves one week left, okay? And we're told that the, that the, uh, the, the seven weeks of, four, of 49 years began with the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, and then we're told that the 62 weeks uh, until Messiah the Prince, and, and the Messiah the Prince, that's a reference to Jesus, uh, shall be 62 weeks. So the first 69 weeks were continuous weeks. 49 years for the purpose of rebuilding and restoring Jerusalem. 434 years after that, uh, when the Messiah would come, but the Messiah who were to come would be introduced as the Messiah, but the Bible says he would be cut off. That's in verse number 25, but not for himself. And where he's going to be exterminated, he's going to be killed, but not for himself. So the Bible even predicts from the time the command to restore Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince was to come, will be a total of 483 years. And you need to know that from the time that command was made, it was 483 years when Jesus was introduced as the Messiah on Palm Sunday, when they, when they recognized him and they yelled, Hosanna in the highest. Uh, that was the 483, uh, 83rd year and that was the fulfillment of prophecy. So now there's one week left, okay, as it pertains to the people of Israel. And that's the key thing I want to keep stressing because most people uh, somehow overlook the importance of Israel as a nation, as a people, as it relates to prophecy. If you want to understand how God relates to the world, you need to understand the role that Israel plays in that process, okay? And, and now you are told the six divine purposes that God has for the 490 years that he's carved out. Now we have a time gap between the 69th week and the 70th week. So there's one week left, or we would say a period of seven years. There, there are seven years left that pertains to the nation of Israel. And you may be asking, well, uh, uh, what happened to that seventh year? Well, number one, it hasn't, it hasn't begun yet. Number two, it will, it will begin, it will resume, but uh, for at least 2,000 years, uh, we've been in a, 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 a pause. We've been in a uh, a, a circle. We've been in a, in a holding tank. You need to know that uh, God's purpose will come together in God's own time uh, timeline 
And I want to show you today that God predicts in the Bible, or the Bible predicts as God has divinely inspired, that there would be a, a time of trouble for Israel, the people of Israel, like nothing that has ever happened before. Okay, so that's number one. And let's look and see what happens with the uh, resumption of the 70th week. If you take a look in verse number 27, it says, Then he shall confirm with many for one week. Uh, he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. That's the last, that's the last of the seven years. But in the middle of the week, that's three and a half years, he shall bring it into sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. So the last seven years will begin when the, uh, the he is the Antichrist. The Antichrist who is to come, is going to make a covenant with many in the nation of Israel that will resume that seven-year period. But in the middle of the seven weeks, uh, we're told that he shall break uh, the covenant and he's going to cause the sacrifices to cease. Now, you need to know that when Daniel was uh, receiving this revelation uh, uh, from the angel Gabriel, that the Jewish nation was already uh, in a period of, of abandonment, desolation. You need to know that the, the Babylonians, in which Daniel was in, was in Babylon at the time of this revelation, you need to know that there were three periods of time in which Babylon would, would come and invade Israel, but it was in that last time that they came that they destroyed the temple. Uh, the first time they came was in 606 B.C. The second time they came and, and took some exiles with them was 597 B.C. And the third time they came, uh, and this time they came, they destroyed the temple, was 586 B.C. And, and Daniel was one of, that, one of those last groups, 586 to be deported to Babylon. So in 586 B.C., Solomon's temple was destroyed. Well, eventually they, they were allowed to return back to uh, their, their homeland. Eventually, uh, as the prophecy stated in Daniel 9, uh, they would, they would uh, be allowed to rebuild the city. And, and uh, they also wanted to rebuild the temple. And so when Jesus comes along, uh, the temple is standing again. Uh, and, it, and it's called Herod's Temple uh, because when King Herod came on, one, one of his building projects was to rebuild the temple. Uh, it may not have been restored to the to the the level of Solomon's temple, but it was greatly admired uh, in the days of Jesus and, and, and how magnificent this temple that was now standing. So when Jesus comes on board and he's allowed to, uh, when he was born on the eighth day, he went to the temple uh, when he was 12 years old and uh, his mother and stepdad, Joseph, uh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and he was left behind. He was found at the temple. Uh, and uh, and on, on the last week prior to Jesus' death, uh, as he enters into Jerusalem, uh, he uh, continues to preach and teach in the temple. In Matthew chapter 24, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, the disciples uh wanted Jesus to admire the beauty of the temple. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, that not one stone that's of the temple will remain. Where Jesus was saying that the temple that you are admiring right now, one day is going to be destroyed. 
we know from history that in A.D. 70, the second temple was destroyed. Now, the first temple was Solomon's temple, which was destroyed in 586 B.C. The second temple, which had been rebuilt, was destroyed in A.D. 70. Guess what? Here it is, 2023, and still to this day, over 2,000 years later, there is no temple in Jerusalem. The only place that you can even see any semblance of a temple where it may have been at one time is a wailing wall. Jewish, devout Jewish people uh, and Christians around the world when they come to Jerusalem, they will oftentimes make their, make their way to the Wailing Wall where Jews will pray on a daily basis about the restoration of their kingdom and of the temple. Uh, you need to know that even now, uh, there, there's a growing list of, uh, of, of Jewish people who have returned to Jerusalem who are desiring for the temple to be rebuilt. So, the last time that uh, lambs were slaughtered uh, was in A.D. 70. Why? Because the temple had, uh, after A.D. 70, had been totally wiped out, totally destroyed. So now you go to Jerusalem and you're looking for the temple. It's not there. But the Bible does predict that there will be a rebuilt temple before Jesus returns. So let's look, if you would, take your Bible and go to Matthew chapter 24, because I want you to see something. Now, I get excited about this. Perhaps you may not, uh, but I get excited when we start talking about uh, what God wants us to know as it pertains to the end of time. And I believe we should be excited about it because it appears to me that things are falling in place. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 24 and let's look at verse 15. These are the words of Jesus. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet, by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down or take anything out of his house. And let, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. And this is why I wanted to stop right here. Verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. So, when Jesus is speaking, he talks about a prophecy that Daniel wrote about that has not yet been fulfilled. Go back to verse 56. And when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So there's, there's, there is an abomination that is going to cause the, the sacrifices in the temple to stop. And Jesus said, it has not yet occurred. Okay? Now go back to Daniel chapter 9. This is critical. So in Daniel chapter 9, we're told in verse number 27, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall, bring an, he, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offer. In other words, the sacrificing that takes place with the temple sacrifices of the lambs, we're told uh, it, something is going to happen. 
in the middle of those last seven years that's going to cause the sacrifices and the offerings to, uh, to stop, to cease. And it's going to be an abomination. Well, we're also told in verse number 26, And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood until the end of the war. Desolations are determined. Well, let's, let's see if we can check this out. So we know that the second temple, the first temple was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar in A.D. 586. We know that the second temple was destroyed in A.D. 70 by the uh, Roman general uh, Titus. Okay? The question is, is Titus the fulfillment of what Daniel prophesies in Daniel 9, beginning with verse 25 through verse 27? Uh, was it Titus who caused the sacrifices and the, and, and, uh, the abominations to, to occur? Well, when Jesus spoke, the temple was still standing. Uh, Titus came in uh, three decades later, did destroy the temple, but the question is, did Titus ever make a covenant with the nation of Israel that caused the last seven years to start? The answer to that is no. Titus made no covenant with many. Uh, and so uh, we know that in verse 27, it said he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. We know that's not Titus because Titus did not make any covenant with the Jewish people. So that must be future, okay? That must be future. Uh, and, but we are told that, that uh, the temple is going to be destroyed. Well, we... We definitely know that the temple was destroyed in A.D. 586, uh, uh, 586 B.C. We definitely know that the, temp the second temple was destroyed in A.D. 70. The point I'm making is Jesus was speaking about a third temple. A third temple. Here it is, 2023. There is no temple. So there has to be a future temple that is going to be built where sacrifices are going to occur uh, and that something is going to occur that will cause the sacrifices to cease. We're told in Daniel 9 verse 27 that the seven years that are left as it relates to the nation of Israel uh, in the middle of the seven years, the covenant will be broken. Now, Jesus told us that, that when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, you've been told to flee. But Jesus said in verse 21 that it was going to be a time of great tribulation. So the point I want to make is very simple. The last seven years uh, in human history, the last seven years of the seventh week uh, of the prophecy that pertains to the nation of Israel, they're one and the same. And we're told by Jesus it's a time of great tribulation and we're told by Jesus that this time is going to be so bad that there is nothing that has occurred prior to it that will be anywhere close to resembling it. So you need to know that this last seven years is known as the tribulation period, but it's also known as the great tribulation. Okay, now take your Bible. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. 
if you would, go over to Daniel chapter 12. Look at verse 1. At that time, Michael, and Michael is an archangel, we know that from the book of Jude, shall stand up. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. In other words, Michael is the angel, the archangel, who uh, works specifically as it relates to the nation of Israel, uh, the Jewish people, Abraham descended. Now we're told at that time Michael shall stand up the great prince who, st who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time, and at that time your people shall be delivered. Now you need to know that Daniel refers to it as a time of trouble. We're also told in Daniel chapter 12 that this time of trouble will be uh, like something that has never occurred since there was a nation. Where it's going to be an unparalleled, unprecedented time of trouble. So, so Jesus referred to it as the great tribulation. Daniel refers to it as a time of trouble. They're talking about the same thing time period, the last seven years of human history prior to the return of Jesus. Jesus said it's going to be so bad that if that, uh, number one, pray that it doesn't, uh, that you're not pregnant, that you don't have small kids, pray that it doesn't occur in the winter time. Uh, it's going to be such an urgency to leave uh, don't go back to your house to try to get anything. If you're in the field, just run. It's going to be a time of trouble. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, except those days be shortened, no flesh shall be saved. And, and all of this, you need to know, is focusing in on the nation of Israel. Critical point. So it's a time of trouble. Now, are there other prophets who spoke about these last seven years that will give us insight into uh, just how bad this time period is? I'm glad, you, I'm glad you asked. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. And I believe it's around about verse 21. In Jeremiah 30, I'm sorry, it's verse 7. In Jeremiah 30, the prophet Jeremiah says this, At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Well, Jacob is, a, is the father of the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes became the nation of Israel. Jeremiah, when he, he uses the phrase uh, Jacob's trouble to refer not to Jacob because Jacob has been long dead, but he's using that to refer to Jacob's descendants, the nation of Israel. So Daniel refers to as a time of trouble. Jeremiah refers to it as a time of Jacob's trouble. Jesus referred to it as the great tribulation. Now, if you go to the book of Joel, Joel refers to it as the day of the Lord. So, the last seven years, unparalleled. Now, remember, go back to Daniel chapter 9. Not only did the angel Gabriel say that 70 weeks of 490 years are determined for your people, but also for your holy city. What is the holy city for the, for the nation of Israel? 
Jerusalem. Okay? Now take your Bible and go with me to the book of Zechariah. Because Zechariah had a lot to say as it pertains to the, to the city of Jerusalem. Take a look at, at Zechariah chapter 12. And let's start at verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord who stretches out the heaven and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding people when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. Verse 3. And this shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all people. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. The point I want to point out there is that God is, through the prophet Zechariah, is telling us that Jerusalem is going to be a focal point of the world's attention. And that at some point in human history, the nations will want to do away with the city of Jerusalem, the capital of, of the nation of Israel. And you need to know that even today, there are, there are countries in the Middle East and beyond who have made it their goal as, a, as foreign policy to destroy the Jewish people, to wipe out the nation of Israel. Now, who's behind it? Is it, is it, a, is it a foreign leader? I, I would say you need to go even deeper than that. Could it be But there's a spirit, an evil spirit, who is desiring to wipe off the uh, wipe out the nation of Israel off the planet, so that uh, Satan can have accomplished what he desires to accomplish, which is the total destruction of of Jacob's seed. You need to know in the last days there are going to be countries who will who will have a mindset to destroy Israel. But you need to know, Daniel told us that they would be delivered, Daniel chapter 12. Jeremiah in chapter 30, verse 7, said that they would be, it would be a time of trouble, but they would be saved. Zechariah tells us that even though the nations make plans to gather against it, we're told uh, that they will be cut in pieces. In other words, even though they want to destroy Jerusalem, destroy the nation of Israel, destroy the people of Israel, you need to know uh, God told uh, Abraham that I will bless those that bless you and will curse them that curse you. So you need to know that those nations who are coming against Israel will, will find out in, 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 a, in a very direct way that uh, when they come against the nation of Israel, they're, they're trying to basically interrupt God's divine plan and God himself will fight on their behalf. That's the point I want to make. Take a look at verse number nine, also in Zechariah chapter 12. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Jerusalem is, is referred to as the capital, the holy city, the city of God. God's name resides in Jerusalem. That's why the psalmist said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so even though nations may detest uh, the nation of Israel, uh, the people of Israel, the plans that God has for Israel, you need to know that God is a divine protector and that God has uh, said that 
No matter what you do, Israel will be saved. So the temple that was destroyed in A.D. Uh, uh, 70 will one day be rebuilt. The temple that was destroyed in 586 B.C. by Nebuchadnezzar, it was rebuilt in A.D. 70. It was destroyed, uh, but it's going to be rebuilt in the future. The sacrifices will resume. It has not resumed in, in close to 2,000 years. But something is going to occur uh, during that last seven years that's going to cause the sacrifices to stop. We're told that it's, it's when, when the, the he, which is the Antichrist, makes a covenant with the nation of Israel, that will begin the, the, the beginning of that last seven years. Well, the entire book of Revelation, really from chapter 6 through chapter 19, really identifies what occurs uh, on the earth during those last seven years. And even though it's a time of Jacob's trouble, even though it's a time of, uh, of great tribulation, even though it's a, it's a time of trouble, uh, specifically for the nation of Israel, it's also going to be the day, the, the day of the Lord in which God himself will take vengeance on, 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 on the entire world and those who have rejected uh, the, the lordship of Jesus. Well, but do we have a clue as to what causes the sacrifices in the rebuilt temple to cease. Uh, if you go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I do believe that Paul, uh, divinely inspired by God, gives an insight as to what occurs that's going to cause the sacrifices to cease. Go to, uh, take your Bible, go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and take a look if you would. Uh, the beginning of chapter 2, uh, we're told in verse number uh, 7, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one, I believe that's a term uh, that refers to the Antichrist, will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. But we're told earlier, what was it that he did? Take a look at verse number four. This is the Antichrist. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, one of the reasons we know, uh, if you take a look at this, even though Titus destroyed the temple that was still around in, during Paul's day, you need to know that Titus never went inside the temple and proclaimed himself to be God. So when Paul talks about the temple and, and the fact that uh, this lawless one goes into the temple, uh, sits as God in the temple, and declares himself to be God, that was not Titus, the the. Roman general, nor was it uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. This is a future world leader, the lawless one, the Antichrist, the man of sin. This future world leader in the last seven years who makes a covenant with many, will, who will cause the sacrifices to cease. The thing that he does that causes the sacrifices to cease and causes an abomination to occur is when the Antichrist will go to the city of Jerusalem and guess the, the temple is rebuilt 
uh, will be rebuilt in Jerusalem when the temple is rebuilt. And it will be standing during the last seven years of, of human history prior to the second return of Christ. This world ruler is going to go into Jerusalem, go into the holy place, and declare himself to be God. That's what Jesus was referring to in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. And that's what Jesus said will be the signal for the Jewish people to flee because it's going to be a time of great trouble uh, for, for them as a people. Uh, and yet the prophets from, from Daniel to Jeremiah to Zechariah all said that, that uh, they would be saved, they would be delivered, and that, and that God would fight against those who come against the city of Jerusalem. Now you go back to Daniel chapter 9, now you understand what God was saying about the purposes because Israel's transgression was that they rejected Christ as the Messiah. Their only deliverance is going to be when they acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Messiah. They're going to, they have denied him for over 2,000 years and counting, but the day is going to come when, when they are going through this great tribulation, this time of Jacob's trouble, this time of trouble. Uh, it's during that time frame in which they will search the scriptures. They will turn their heart to God and they will recognize that their Messiah that they've been uh, hoping to see has already been here. And he will return when they acknowledge him as their Messiah. That's the scripture that I want to share with you. Uh, and so the last seven years is really a period of time of great trouble. Now go, go, go take your Bible and go to Revelation chapter 12. So we know, we, we know from the scriptures, Daniel 9, 27, that the, the, the prince who is to come, the he that's mentioned in verse 27, is going to break the covenant in the middle of the week. That's three and a half years. He's going to break the covenant. He's going to cause the sacrifices to cease. We know, we know that he, he broke the covenant or will break it. We now know what he did to break it. He's going to go into the temple and proclaim himself to be God, we also know that it, it signals uh, for the Jewish people to flee because the Antichrist uh, is going to want to destroy them. Uh, now, we, if you take a look at Revelation chapter 12, we get more insight into, into what's actually occurring. So take a look at verse 13. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, the dragon is Satan. We, we found that out in, in Revelation 12, verse number 9. So when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, that's Israel, who gave birth to the male child, that's the Messiah. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she may fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Well, let's take a look at that. We're told that this woman who gave birth to the male child, y'all do know that Jesus uh, came out of the tribe of Judah. Uh, uh, and so that's the male child. But we're told here that the woman, which is Israel, was given uh, two wings like an eagle to, to uh, fly into the wilderness where she is nourished. But we're told that the, the length of her nourishment, take a look at it, time, that's singular, times, that's plural, and half a time. Well, the, the, the time, times, and half a time is equivalent to three and a half years. Okay, let's take a, let's go on and look a bit further. 
So the serpent spewed out water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, but he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. We're told in verse number 12 that the dragon was enraged with the woman. So you need to know that Satan, the last three and a half years, he will spend it pursuing the total destruction of the Jewish people. We're told in Revelation chapter 12 that there was a war. Look at verse 7. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels, same Michael, that's the protector of the nation of Israel in chapter 12 of Daniel, that Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, the dragon and Satan, and his angels. But they did not prevail. That's, Satan did not prevail. Nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. And we're told that the dragon who is that serpent of old, uh, Satan, the devil, was cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. So you need to know that that when I literally said there's going to be hell on earth, the reason why there's going to be hell on earth the last three and a half years, which is the reason why Jesus called it the great tribulation, and the reason why there's nothing that can be compared to it in all of human history is because the last three and a half years, Satan will himself and the demons and the angels will be here on earth. And they're going to be making havoc, attempting to destroy the nation of Israel. In fact, the scripture tells us that the devil knows that he has but a short time where if he, in, in his feeble effort to try to save his kingdom of darkness, he knows that unless he does something dramatically, dramatic, he will, he will fail in his efforts. So in order to savage his kingdom, he's going to do all that he can, and he's, going to, and he's going to be mad at the woman. And we're told in verse number, uh, in chapter 12, in verse number uh, 12, that he's not only mad with the woman, but he, uh, he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandment of God and those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So anybody who gets saved in the tribulation period, you need to know the devil's coming after you. And you need to know he's coming after the nation of Israel. And you, and you But the good news is he will not prevail. Just like he lost against Michael and his angels, he's going to lose in his efforts to destroy uh, those who will turn their hearts to Christ and those who have the testimony of Jesus. I, I have said all of this to, to kind of put in pieces. There are so many people don't know the book of Revelation or are afraid to read it because they don't understand it. But if you understand it within the context of the, uh, of the nation of Israel, God's people, then you'll better understand why it's important to pay attention to what's taking place over in the Middle East uh, America is not the center of, uh, of God's plan, nor are there other countries like Russia and, and like Ukraine and like England or France. No, the center of God's plan uh, for mankind really centers on the nation of Israel. And we're told that one of the purposes that will be accomplished through the nation of Israel is that... Uh, it, it will bring in everlasting righteousness. And you need to know the, the, the culmination of the last seven years will be the return of Jesus. And, and I think it behooves all of us, especially those who study the Bible, study prophecy, it behooves us to pay attention to what's going on in the world uh, get your head out of the sand, pay attention to what's going on in the world, what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on as it pertains to the people of God. There's a spiritual warfare that's occurring in the heavenlies 
that we can't see with our naked eye, but you need to know uh, that there are there are demonic forces. There are there are fallen angels who are doing their best to maintain their foothold on on this fallen world, and and, and Satan has a, has a desire to destroy anything and anyone who who has allegiance to God. Uh, and so uh, God has not cast away his people forever. The day is going to come when, when uh, the children of Israel, Abraham's physical descendants, will indeed acknowledge Christ as their Messiah, but is going to take the tribulation period, the last seven years. Uh, it's going to take that time frame to, to bring it back now. Uh, in the time I have left, I do just kind of want to give you an overview of what those last seven years are going to look like. Uh, uh, we know from the last seven years and, and from the uh, beginning with chapter six in the book of Revelation, we know that peace is going to be taken from the earth. Uh, the four horsemen, we know uh, peace is going to be taken from the earth. We also know that there will be uh, famines. There will be, uh, there will be uh, a breakout of wars. Uh, followed by the wars will be famine and pestilences. We also know that during the seal judgment, that one-fourth of the world's population is going to die. Before the tribulation period ends, at least half the world's population would have been killed. Now, today that would be about almost four million, uh, four billion people. Can you imagine half the world's population dying as a result of war, as a result of famine, as a, as a result of pestilences and diseases? And the, the man who started all of this by making a covenant with the nation of Israel, which I believe is going to have something to do with the rebuilt temple. Uh, he comes in as a man of peace in the beginning. But shortly thereafter, his true colors are revealed. And we see him making his way uh, to set up what he believes will be uh, a, a, an effort to be worshipped by the world, inspired by Satan himself. And he's, and, and he's going to set up uh, a one-world government. And he's going to set up a, a one-world economy. And he's going to set up a one-world religious system, which is the worship of him. Inspired by Satan. Now you may be asking, Sneed, that seems so far-fetched. There is no way in the world that one man is going to rule the world. There is no way in the world that there's going to be uh, one economy. Uh, there's no way in the world that there's only going to be one religion. Well, you don't know your Bible. God has given us a glimpse into the future. And the one thing I do know is that Anything that's run by man in the absence of God is going to be a total failure. And that's why you can, uh, you can rest assured, yes, there will be efforts. There will be a one world government ruled the last three and a half years by the Antichrist. There will be a one world economy set up by him in which no one can buy or sell anything Unless they have the mark of the mark of his name, okay. And those who are not saved are going to worship him. If the Bible says it's going to happen, you can rest assured it's, it will happen. Now, what does that have to do with me in twenty twenty three? I'll tell you what it has to do with you. There are things that are occurring right now as you study the Bible it makes it crystal clear that we are living in the last of the last days, closely approaching the last seven years. So what I hope to do on next week 
I want to show you uh, a glimpse of some uh, wars against the nation of Israel. And I want to show you how that, how that plays into uh, the, the last of the last days. I want to thank you. Uh, if you're watching this and you have an interest and you will have a desire to uh, perhaps get my handouts that I've taken the time to, to put together over the years and I've given it out to people. If you feel led to just uh, call Ben Washington Baptist Church and, and tell them that you've been watching this on YouTube and you have an interest in getting the handouts and, and it's easy to follow, it kind of gives you a... a a, para, a, a, a panoramic view of the last seven years. I'm not through with the last seven years, but I want to give you an, an, an overview. Just know you can't study the book of Revelation without referring to or going to the book of Daniel. So thank you. God bless you. We'll see you again real soon. Thank you for listening to the BWBC online Bible study lesson. We pray that you have been blessed.